All right, everybody, good morning. Welcome to Sprouting STEM with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky from the Museum of Discovery and Science. And today we're going to be talking about what animals need to live, their habitats, and animal homes. So if you're ready to get started, we're going to sing our welcome song and it has signs. So this one is more. This one is together, this is happy, and friend. Okay, so feel free to sing along with me. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friend is my friend, and my friend is your friend. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Awesome. Well, today I have a fun song for you about penguins. And we're going to do a penguin dance. So I'm going to sing it. If you guys know the words, feel free to sing along. But definitely get up and do the movement. All right. Sorry, cameras. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, begin. Right, Flipper. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, begin. Right flipper, left flipper. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, begin. Right flipper, left flipper, right leg. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, begin. Right flipper, left flipper, right leg, left leg. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, begin. Right flipper, left flipper, right leg, left leg, nod your head. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, begin. Right flipper, left flipper, right leg, left leg. Nod your head, turn around. Have you ever seen a penguin come to tea? If you look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention. Penguins, dismissed. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. Clap your hands and stomp your feet. Make your hands all nice and neat. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. So today's story is called A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. And this is going to be a story about a home. So hermit crabs have shells, but they don't make them themselves. They borrow them from other creatures who don't need them any longer. So as soon as my um, PowerPoint pops up, we will read this story. There we go. A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean, but it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside it 
to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looks so, well, so plain, thought the hermit crab. In March, hermit crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain, it needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, hermit crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the sea floor. How handsome you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, singled a little sea star. Carefully, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, hermit crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. Wow, let's look at everything on his shell. You see the sea anemone and the sea star and the crusty coral. In June, hermit crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. In September, hermit crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. All right, so if we look now, we see a sea anemone, a sea star, a crusty coral, a snail, a sea urchin, and a lanternfish. In October, hermit crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said hermit crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered hermit crab. But in November, hermit crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little over the year, hermit crab had grown. Soon he would have to find another bigger home but he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought hermit crab. They are like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered Hermit Crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here, 
but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but sponges, he thought, barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there were so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. Would you like to tell me something you might decorate your hermit crab with? Clownfish. Clownfish? What else? Um, else? Pebbles. Pebbles. <laughs> All right. Glitter. All right. Well, we're going to go now to the museum and look at some animal houses for our friends at the museum. All right. Oh, I see we have some people at the museum. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So what do you have with you today? Uh, so today I have Biscuit. He's a Florida king snake. He's actually one of my favorites here. Oh, wow. And over here we have Buddy, our gopher tortoise. Oh, so what kind of house does the gopher tortoise have? Doesn't he just live in a shell? Uh, no, so gopher tortoises will actually make burrows, uh, so they'll tunnel all around underground, and they'll normally live in those. Oh, wow. And what kind of house does the king snake have? Uh, so king snakes actually would actually possibly live in gopher tortoise burrows. So we have this whole exhibit around over here uh, to kind of act as like a gopher tortoise burrow. These are like different animals you could possibly see in the gopher tortoises uh, burrows. Oh wow! So why would the animals want to live in a in a burrow? Uh, so they probably want to live in burrows to get away from any predators that are hunting them or just being able to hide from something uh, or just to live there as their home. Oh, wow. And what kind of things do they eat? Does the snake eat the gopher turtle? Um, uh, this snake probably wouldn't eat a gopher tortoise. They're a little too small for those big guys over there. Uh, but these guys will eat a lot of different moons, rodents, uh, and also other snakes too, actually. Okay. And how do you decide on what kind of house to build for the uh, animals at the museum? Um, so there's a lot of thinking going into that. We want to make sure they have all the proper shelters, all the proper eating for things. They are reptiles. Um, so we go through a lot of different processes. You can see a lot of it here. Uh, they all got their water bowls, little shelters, things like that. Yeah, so they need food and water and shelter, all those good things. Yeah. All right. Well, I love seeing all the animals. Can we see the gopher turtle one more time? The tortoise. So what's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? Uh, tortoises will be land friendly and turtles are more uh, water like. Ah. All right. Well, thank you so much. We will come and visit you again in a couple of weeks when it's animal week. All right. I hope to see you guys there. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, I wanted to learn a little bit more about animal homes and animal habitats. So I took a tour of my local park and I also asked some of my friends for their videos. So if you don't mind, we're going to go and look at my video about animal homes. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to Camp Everglades at Volunteer Park here in Plantation. Today I'm looking for animal habitats, animal houses, and all kinds of things animals need to live out in nature. Animals need food. Here's some berries, some red berries. Some animals eat flowers. 
Animals also need water to live. And they need lots of space to run around and have fun. And most animals need a special home to have. Look up in the tree, do you see a bird's nest? He made it himself out of leaves and sticks. Oh wow, there he is. It's a crow flying around. Here's another bird. It's called a sparrow. Ooh, a squirrel. They like to live in trees because they can climb up really high. Oh look, it's a turtle hole in the middle of the pond. And there's some fish swimming in the lake. Let's look for some lizards. There's one in the tree. Let's see if he'll move. There he goes. Here comes another lizard. Look fast. Oh, ants. They live in a hill. Do you see them going in and out and carrying food and supplies into their home? Here's some more ants. They can carry up to 300 times their body weight. Do you see the spider's web? Spiders spin them almost every night. I spot a butterfly. Do you? Now that we see how animals live in nature, we can recreate some of those in our houses. That's how we can take care of our pets. Let me show you some of the pets that I know. Here's my dog Boomer snuggled in his blanket. Here's my friend Daisy. She likes to sleep on a couch. Here's my aunt's cat. She sleeps on an ottoman. Here my friend Jose's hedgehog. See the food and the wheel to run on and the blue house to sleep in at night. Here's Alina's bunnies. They eat hay, they snuggle, and they eat some pellets. And my friend Lyndon, it's a bird. He is a salt and he likes to play with box. This is a stall for a horse. They can sleep in them and they can play in their stall, but they can also go outside to a ring and practice jumping. And here's where they would take a bath or a shower. Thanks so much for visiting with me and learning about animal homes and what they need to live. Join me inside. All right. That was a great idea. So I have a couple of finger plays, but I want to make sure we understand that the word habitat is an idea in nature that an animal needs food and water and shelter or a home and some space. So the first finger play that I have, we'll do two times. So I'll show you the first time and you can join in on the second. Here is a nest for a robin. Here is a hive for a bee. Here is a hole for a bunny. And here is a house for me. Ready to try it? Here is a nest for a robin. Here is a hive for a bee. Here is a hole for a bunny. And here is a house for me. And I have a bonus song for you this week. So this one I'm just gonna sing. I'll sing it two times. The first time you can hear it and the second time you can join in. Food, water, shelter, space makes a happy living place. I live in my habitat, eating bits of this and that. Food, water, shelter, space, makes a happy living place. Are you ready to sing with me? Food, water, shelter, space, makes a happy living place. I live in my habitat, eating bits of this and 
Water, shelter, space makes a happy living place. That was a great song. All right, I have one more story for you today, and it's called Do Lions Live on Lily Pads? And it's by Ashley Myers. But I made it into a felt board, so come on over to the felt board. And I want you to go ahead, you can help me tell the story by telling me yes or no if you think it's true, okay? So we'll start here. Do lions live on lily pads? No. No. Frogs live on lily pads. Do goats live in a nest? No. No. Birds no. live in a nest. Yes. Yes. Do alligators live in a shell? No. No. But snails do. Yes. Yes. Do giraffes live in a hole? No. A no. 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 But moles do. Yes. yes. Do fit? Hold on. Do parakeets live in a bowl? No. 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 But fish do. Yes. 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 Do guinea pigs live on a web? No. No. But spiders do. Yes. Yes. Okay. And do fleas live on fur? No. Yes. Yes, yes they do. Scratch, scratch. All right. Fleas are oftentimes found on our pets, like dogs or cats, special medicines and things to keep them away. Well, I have been enjoying your challenges, and this week I have a challenge for you to build a habitat or a place, an animal home. So this is one that I built, but you can build all kinds of things, maybe a bird house. This is called a toad house. And toads are like frogs, and they like to eat all the bad insects in our yard. So I took a flower pot and I glued some things on it. You could glue rocks or shells, or you could color it with a marker, whatever you want. And then I prop it here on a rock, and the toad can come and live underneath. Because toads are amphibians, that means that they live part of their time in the water and part on land but they like to be moist and have some water near them. So we're providing them with a shelter here. So you can put it in your yard, and usually after three or four days, you'll see that a toad has moved in. So I would love for you to post pictures of any kind of animal home that you make. So have your grown up go to any social media and tag us using hashtag mods challenge, and I can see what you're doing. I've seen lots of great things. I've seen turtle stories in your backyard. I've seen some leaf animals, and I've seen some three little pig houses. I love seeing what you're doing at home. So it's now time to say goodbye. So if you know our goodbye song, feel free to sing along, okay? We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. Yes. We clap our hands below our Wave bye like this. Join me next week at 10 and we're going to talk about health and hand washing and germs. See you bye. next week. Bye. Bye.